This is The Speaking Show. I'm David Newman, and you're tuned in to the number one podcast for speakers, consultants, and experts who want to speak more profitably. Are you ready to get into action? You better be, because Robert Middleton is here, the consultant to consultant, the guru to gurus. Thanks a lot, David. Great to be here. Now, you have just developed, after just decades, decades of helping solopreneurs, consultants, coaches, small business owners, you've developed something new and exciting, and it has to do with the big lights on Broadway. You want to walk us through that new model of consulting and entrepreneurial success? Yes, of course. (laughs) So, you know, I'm always creating new models and models in marketing are really useful to understand, well, how does this work? You know, it's creating metaphors and it's creating steps. So I'm going to give you a few things today and then we'll see, you know, if you can apply this. So the very first thing is I was writing my email newsletter today and I said, you know, you want to make things simple in your marketing. And one model for simplicity is the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. You know, if you can narrow it down to the 20% of things that give you 80% of the results and focus on those 20%, you're going to save a lot of time and get better results. So I thought, well, what are the 20%, those top things in marketing that we ought to be putting most of our time into? So I have four things. Okay, so the first is come up with a premium service or program to offer your clients a service that will deliver superior results for them every time a service that makes a real difference. Because, you know, often what professional service businesses do, they say, well, I have these skills. I have these abilities. I do consulting. I do coaching. You know, what do you need? You know, that never really works that well. Instead of I put it all together into a package, into a program. You understand this, David. You've done this. You do this. You sell programs and services at a high end. You package them. You make them real. And so that's the first thing. Create a high end program, right? Number two, learn how to get in front of your prospective clients who are the most likely to buy your services. Now, that's easy to say and perhaps the hardest one to do. Because there's a lot of things you can do. But if you don't get in front of the right people and give them your message through whatever means you do, through networking or through webinars or through being interviewed like this or whatever, you ain't getting no clients, right? So that's number two. Number three is develop a way to communicate powerfully to these prospective clients how your service or program will benefit them. And this is the one that I believe nobody understands, nobody does well, is the most powerful thing of all. It's where the magic happens when you give the presentation. You see, I saw David's presentation on his high-end client program, and I said, man, that's one of the best presentations. So I taped his presentation, and I deconstructed it, and I took the presentation I had, and I made it better, And then I used it for my promotion of my next program. I did three webinars and got 16 people in my program for close to $5,000 each. And it was like, wow, that really worked. And then I said, well, let's turn this into more of a model that I can teach people. And now I'm teaching people that. And we're going to talk about that today. Well, Robert, the critical piece that people need to know, whether they tape your webinar or they tape my webinar, is then you came into the program so that we could put the structure and the magic in place for your business. So I don't want people to just go random taping webinars and thinking that's the same as investing with you or investing with me. Yes. Well, it gives you the tip of the iceberg. Right? Correct. Exactly right. Yes. So number four Learn to ask for the business and get prospective clients to say yes to you and pay you for your service or program. That's really the simplest thing of all. It's really not the hardest one, but a lot of people fall down on that. And we fall down on all of these things. We don't have a high-end program. We're not in front of people. We don't have a great presentation. We don't know how to ask for the business. So if we learn how to do those four things, and you are a master of those things, no question about it. You do it all day and twice on Sundays, right? 
True. Ridiculous amounts of money and making a lot of people happy. So it's those four things. So the thing that we want to focus on first, or really focus on in this interview, in this thing, is talking about the presentation. So after uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, just before the beginning of my new program, I don't know, you know, you know how you get an idea? Yes, that's an idea. And it was like, well, marketing is like, and giving a presentation is like going on Broadway. By the way, fun fact, I have an MFA in stage directing. So when you say Broadway, I'm like, I'm all perking up, I'm all excited. Well, then you get the concept. Right. I mean, if you're in stage direction, you understand it. So I call the lights, camera, action, clients. Marketing and presenting your professional services is very much like staging and performing in a Broadway play. First, there's the big idea. That's the theme of your play, your marketing message, the concept that you pitch to your prospective clients. You know, as we said before, that is your high-end service. So second, there's your script, which includes your marketing materials and presentation that explains what your service or program is all about and what your clients get. And we're going to be really getting into this because this is what you have to get down. What is the script to that presentation? Next is the table read, where you go over your presentation, work out the kinks, and fine-tune it until you're presenting your points with maximum impact. So I'm sure you've done this. You know, you've created the first draft of your presentation, then you go over it, and then you change words, and you change the order, and you add some graphics, then you know, you really fine-tune it until it really sings, until it's a powerful presentation. Then come the rehearsals, where you practice your presentation live, out loud, until you have it down cold and could do it in your sleep. I can't tell you how many people do a presentation and never practice it once. I've asked people, well, you, okay, you've created your presentation. Did you practice it before you gave the talk in front of 50 people? No, I just read it over once. And it's like, would you do that on Broadway? You know, I'm going to be the lead in Hamlet, and you show up the day of the opening. Where have you been for rehearsals? Well, I just read it over a couple times, but I'm going to kind of wing it for opening night. And there's a name for that, Fired Actor. <laughs> yes, fired actor and amateur mindset for sure. <laughs> amateur mindset. So look, this is your business. You're presenting what you have. You've got to have it down. You've got to have the script and practice and be good at it and the nuances of it. And then you can have a powerful presentation that produces the result you want. Then the actual performance where you deliver your presentation in front of a live audience, your prospective clients, is where all your hard work pays off. You know, you get the standing ovation. They throw you roses. They throw you money. Finally, there's the applause and the curtain calls where your client says yes to your proposal and you move forward to a long, productive, and profitable relationship with the client. So that's how it works. So this is the process I just went through by giving three webinar presentations to close to 200 people and signed up 19 new clients for my new marketing action group. The truth is, almost nobody does this, right, David? Correct. This is rare right. as hen's teeth. And yet, here it is. This is what you do. You know, it's very common to do this on Broadway. You know, I just read the statistics for success on Broadway. The success on Broadway is, I think it's less than 20%. So even if you do all this, the success rate is 20%. If you don't do all of this, the chance of succeeding on Broadway goes to zero. You know, you close after opening night, right? You hear that all the time. Yeah. You get a bad review. You know, this piece of excrement was only good for a few laughs and a lot of groans. Do not show up. You're closed. Right. Well, that's what we do on our business. We present in an amateur kind of way. Nobody signs up and we wonder what's going on. Well, you're not being professional. We have a weak idea, no script, a lame presentation, no table reader rehearsal, and the performance to improvise. It's strictly amateur hour. Really is. And we wonder why we don't attract more clients. So start thinking of marketing and presenting your professional services as if you were producing a Broadway play 
and you just might have a hit on your hands. Hey, this interview is a real moneymaker. If you're serious about ramping up your reach and revenue as a speaker, trainer, or expert, book a confidential speaker strategy call with our team. The link is doitmarketing.com slash call. It will be the most valuable 45 minutes you invest in your speaking-driven business. Speaking of value, let's get back to the show. So give me your reflections of that, David. What do you think about that? Is that true in your experience? It is very true. Well, and this has to do everything with not having an outcome, right? So kind of, oh yeah, and this is where people start charging hourly and all kinds of crazy mistakes they're making. This is where people commoditize themselves when there's no unique idea and there's no script and there's no planful forward movement in a sales conversation. Like, oh, well, you're like all the other consultants I just spoke to. Oh, you're like all the other coaches I just spoke to. And then I think, but you're right, the script, let's say they get the buyer's attention. They get the prospect's attention. Then it's, this is the moment where you either win it or you lose it. And 80% of the time we go in unprepared, unarmed, and just going, well, I guess I'll find out what they're up against. I guess I find out what they want. And then when it comes to me, it's like, yeah, we do something sort of like that, I guess, ish. And then it just all falls apart. And then people wonder, and we're going to get you know, into the, the nuts and bolts of this, why do we get ghosted? Why do we get put off? As soon as, you know, why do clients go dark? Suddenly, like as soon as you've done that terrible presentation, they no longer take your calls. They no longer answer emails. Those voicemails go into some kind of black hole. And you're wondering, how did I blow this? Well, go back to the very last interaction that you had. That's when you blew it because now they're not talking to you and it's probably the presentation. Yeah, and the thing is about the presentation or whatever you did is they don't really understand the true value of what you do. They're not buying because they don't like you. They just don't understand it. They don't see the value. This money for that, I don't get it. So let me tell you something. For years, this is how I marketed my services fairly successfully, you know, after I got online. You know, I started to write sales letters, pretty long sales letters, and I was pretty good at it. And so I would market and I developed an email list and I would say to my list, I'm starting a new program in a month or two. And if you'd like to know more about this program, go to this page and we'll tell you all about it. And then at the bottom of that sales letter, if you're interested in knowing more, fill out a brief form telling me a little bit about your situation. And then we'll talk and see if the program is right for you. Well, guess what? That really worked for me. I would get 40 or 50 people filling out that form. I mean, that's good, right? And then I did a strategy session with them. I talked to them for about an hour. But now they knew what the program was. They knew why it was, what the results are, how it worked, what the structure, all that kind of stuff. They knew that. That worked. But then something happened in the last couple of years. I started to send these sales letters and two or three people filled out the application. And I, well, you know, what's going on here? Are my writing skills completely atrophied or, you know, what's wrong? And I was starting to panic about this. It was like, this isn't working anymore. I've got to do something different. You know, what I think it is, is people are so inundated with stuff online and reading stuff that long sales letters are like a chore. I mean, they're always a bit of a chore anyway. A long sales letter that's 10 pages long takes a few minutes to read, right? But nevertheless, they were working. But now, and especially since COVID-19, it seems we're getting more emails, more promotions, more things, and it's overkill. So you go to a sales letter and you don't read the whole thing and you don't fill it out and it doesn't happen. So, you know, with your program and other study I did, I said, forget the sales letter. Turn the sales letter into a presentation. So a presentation is where the magic happens. See, something happens in a presentation or a webinar that can't happen in a sales letter. Because in the sales letter, I'm by myself. I'm reading on my own. No one is guiding me. There's no audio. It's only visual. And even if it's nicely set up and well done, which most sales letters, by the way, aren't, they're crap, they're terrible, 
poor formatting, no graphics, poorly written anyway. But when you have someone on a presentation, you're giving someone the same information, but they're seeing the words in front of them as you speak them. So it's like TV with subtitles. They're reading it. They're understanding it. They're comprehending it. So what I found after giving a presentation, what I said is that after the presentation, if you think this program might be for you, send me an email right now and we'll set up a time to chat. That was my call to action. 20% of the people who were on the call did that and almost all of them signed up. So that's a pretty damn good result, right? So they responded to that in the moment. Here it is. This is what it's all about. This is how it works. You know, here's how the pricing works. Here's how I've structured it. Here's my guarantee. Here's my promise. Here's how you start. Now, here's another interesting thing. I also said, look, if you would like to watch the video of the presentation, you can. But I did something interesting because I found that if people went to that, usually nothing happened. So I said, if you can, it's a nominal $5 fee to watch the presentation. (laughs) I try different things. You did it live for free and then you sold the replay for $5 if they missed it live. Yeah, it made me a couple hundred bucks, you know. But even then, only one of the people that watched the live presentation signed up. So there's, you know, some people, you know, Brendan Bruchard and, and a lot of people do really good video presentations. But let me tell you, doing a good video presentation to get the kind of results you want is closer to rocket science than giving a webinar live. Because you can be forgiven a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's live. You're interacting with the audience. There's a certain dynamic. I do it where I can actually see my audience with a Zoom, and then I bring up the thing, and I can see myself in the corner and all that. And I talk to everybody. So it's very personal. Yeah. You know, and nobody leaves. Almost everybody that comes in the beginning is there by the end. So you know you've got their undivided attention. Yeah. Now, if you give a crappy presentation after all of that, all bets are off. I mean, but all things being equal, and if you give a great presentation, you present something to the right people in the right way with the right information and tie it all together you will get results unlike anything else I've ever done. And it's fun and it's easy to do. And it doesn't have to be perfect like a video presentation. So might you walk us through this magic formula for presentations that convert and presentations that people love to listen to? Yes. So let me tell you what I came up with. I said, you know, so I've explained this to people. I said, well, here's my presentation. Here's me doing a video of it. Here's what I covered. And, you know, if you want to get people to do things, give people templates. Templates to fill out are amazingly effective at getting people to actually do something. So I said, why don't I create what I call the presentation narrative template? So you write out your whole script for your presentation, and then you can convert it to slides later on. It is a mistake starting with slides, I think. Many people do that, but you get lost in doing the PowerPoint and laying it out and finding the graphics. And, you know, I had a client that did it. She says, yes, I created a presentation. It took me 60 hours. You know, that's not really very sustainable to take 60 hours to do a presentation. I might take eight or 10 hours. That's a lot. But 60, that's crazy. But with a narrative template, you can do it in a couple hours, and then you put your slides together. So let me show you what I created that I call my narrative presentation template. This is where the magic happens, correct? Yes. I like it. I like magic. So this is the slide, and this is the text that you put into your slide. So, you know, this is all I gave people, and I said, okay. And you can look at mine as kind of an example. So I'll go over some of this, not necessarily all of it. We'll see how it goes. So first, you have your title of your presentation, you know, how to attract more of your ideal clients. And then you start with a problem. Is this your big challenge or problem? Are you having a hard time doing X, attracting the kinds of clients that you want? But then you get into it a bit more. So is this true for you? You can't get in front of people. People aren't converting, this, that, or the other thing. 
So you have three or four things, your big problem, and then you break it down. You know, and when you did this on your presentation, you talked about the problems of COVID-19 and, you know, there's more challenges in converting people right now. So whatever your situation is, this is so important to get on the side of your clients. What are they feeling? What are they experiencing? What are they struggling with right now? Right. That gets you into present time with your clients. Yes, I can relate to that. This is all true for me. So you have, you know, three to five things. And this is also, Robert, this is a great bonding and rapport because as soon as they hear you, they're like, yeah, this Robert Middleton, I like this guy. He understands me. He knows what I'm up against. He knows where I'm coming from. And you're just building some bonds with the audience when you can understand their deepest fears and desires. Yes, absolutely. You know, and before I continue, I want to mention something important. I don't want to forget this. A presentation like this, if you're giving it to a big company, can be done with one decision maker. It doesn't have to be a webinar with 50, 100, 200 people. It can be. That's how I do it because I have a list. But a lot of my clients are selling to big companies, one decision maker. And you see, it seems kind of weird to do a presentation. It is not. They love it. You're organized. You've got your shit together. You know what you're talking about. And you present it in a very conversational kind of way, and people are following along. And you can even have some conversation back and forth as you do it. Yeah. So it works that way. It can work with a small group, a large group, whatever. Okay, your next slide. So what would it take to get this ultimate outcome? What would it take to attract more of your ideal high-end clients? What would it take to be a better leader? What would it take to ta-da, the thing that they want? And then you say, well, it takes these things, three to five things. And so you list these three to five things. So you start outlining your model and you get deeply into your model. It takes, you know, my things would be just like I said, you know, it takes having a high end program. It takes getting in front of your right clients. It takes to doing a presentation. It takes knowing how to close the business. You know, the thing in presentations that we heard years ago, tell them what you're going to tell them. Yeah. Tell them and then tell them what you're told them. So this is telling them what you're going to tell them. You outline the basics of what we're going to cover. So you don't overwhelm them. It's like, here's the big overview. Right. And Robert, I think the important thing here, because, you know, I've seen you do some of these things. These are not the same old things that every other consultant is going to be telling them. These need to be a little bit contrarian or attention getting or startling, not gimmicky, but they need to have a certain little bit of an intrigue or a twist to them, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. It can't be Mick presentation, generic presentation. Right. These are ideas that should have some depth to them, that have an interesting nuance to them, interesting wording to them. Otherwise, it's, well, you're telling me something I've known forever. Why should I be so interested? Right on. So obviously, you know, you have to have the goods to offer here. Right. Then you go into another way of looking at this. Here are a few results you can expect if you do these things. So now you're pointing towards results. So you can expect this result, this result. So you have four or five results. Again, you're reflecting some of the same things. You will get in front of more people. You will present in a way that's powerful. You will get more buy-in, you will have a higher close rate, whatever it is for you. So these are great, but we're not doing case studies or testimonials here yet. Yeah, I have those later. But, you know, sometimes the order of these things is, you know, there's no absolute perfect format, but this format works pretty well. Great. But you want to talk, you know, generally results. So first, I see, I created a thing years ago that I called marketing syntax. Syntax is the order in which you present your marketing ideas. And marketing syntax always starts with, here's who my ideal clients are, here's what their problem is, and here's the results they want. So that's what we've covered so far. Here's you, here's your problem, here's the results you want. Most people jump that and say, here's what we do. Right. Which misses the whole point. It's like you haven't set it up so people would be interested in what you do in the first place, right? So you talk about some of these results and, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot of words. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it has to be pithy. It has to be, yeah, I want that result. I want to be able to do that and that. 
in my heart of hearts, I'm not really good at doing that right now. So you've definitely got my undivided attention. Then you can add another little piece that I think is really powerful. It is not this example of what your approach is not. And then you can do a number of those. So this is not your ordinary, um, what was the old thing? This is not your father's Oldsmobile. Right. (laughs) This is not your father's this. So I say, this is not social media. This is not content marketing. This is not this. This is not that. Because, you know, they tried a lot of those things. It's not that. This is not 100 cold calls a day. No, it's not. It's not all of that stuff. Some of those things work. Some of those might be part of your marketing mix, but that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. Right. So I'm setting people up for, well, what the hell is it, right? So I've got some anticipation. So you cover a number of things that it's not. And then you say the approach that does work is this, that you name your approach, your system. My approach, so I call my approach, is a pro active marketing approach as opposed to a passive marketing approach. It's proactive marketing. Now, maybe I could have a better name than that. Or you put a brand on it. We call it the multifaceted generational influx system, whatever the heck it is. Something that, that's interesting. That's what this is about. Let me tell you about that. Okay. So this is the approach that does work. And this system or approach or methodology has X number of parts. So I have, you know, three or four parts, no more than five. Don't go giving 10 parts. You're going to yeah. you know, overwhelm people. You know, your program has infinite depth. Every piece has another 10 pieces. But if you get into that in too much depth, they will get confused. So here's my three parts, pow, pow, pow. And this is possible for you as well. All you need is what they need to succeed. So what they need to succeed is you just need your current skills and abilities. You need a computer. You need to be able to do this virtually. Hey, it's something that you can do. This is possible for you to do this. Okay, so where do you start with all of this? And then you go to the big ideas and you tease them out. So the big idea, number one, the thing that you have to understand how to do. So the first one I talked about is you have to be able to create a high-end service. I call it an H-E-O-B program, high-end outcome-based program. And then I talk all about that. And I use a fun metaphor to begin with that you used to have a small can of beans on your shelf. And that's all you could sell. Well, you put a medium can of beans on your shelf, you'll sell that. But what if you put an extra large jumbo can of beans on your shelf? Well, if it's on your shelf, you will actually sell it. But no one has this big high-end outcome-based service on their shelf, so they're not selling it. So put it on your shelf. You'll start to sell it. So I have a can of beans and a bigger can of beans and a bigger can of beans. And it's kind of fun. And people go, oh, I see. I need to sell a bigger can of beans. So I like using metaphors in this. Sure. So this is all the stuff having to do with my first idea. So I talk about different aspects of the HEOB. What are components of the HEOB? What does it look like? So enough to let them know not how to create the HEOB. I can't really do that in a presentation like this. But I can give them enough to go, I want that. I need that. That would be great if I have that. That makes sense. You've sold me on the concept. So I've got one, two, three, four ideas for big idea number one. And then big idea number two is you've got to get in front of the right clients. How do you do that? So I talk about some of the different things, the first step, the second step, the third step of that big idea number three, and then the summary of that. And then the big idea number three. Here is the big idea number three, which is you have to give a powerful presentation. And then we talk a little bit about the presentations. And the three ideas around that. So now I've gotten a big picture of the three main things I do and some details on all of those things. So I go, okay, yeah, that sounds good. So see, I'm not really selling yet. I'm teaching. I'm educating. I'm saying you have this problem. You want this result. Here's what you need to do. Here's how to break it down. Here it is. And then people are going, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds possible. You've simplified it enough that I understand it, I get it, it sounds doable, so now what? So the big result of all of this is your ultimate outcome. 
more of your ideal clients. So you come back to the core idea, the ultimate outcome over and over again, what you want, better this, better leadership, better supervisory skills, better marketing, whatever it is. So then you say, well, yeah, but does this really work? You know, I'm sold on it, but, you know, I got a doubt. So that's when you put in your client success stories. Now, I think you sprinkle them throughout your thing, but you can give them all at once if you want. There's various ways to do this. So one way to do it is you have a picture of the person and of a case study or a quote from them. You know, Joe Blow, when he started to work with me, he had this and this. He was getting these kind of clients. But now this is what he's getting. And last I asked him, he's making $300,000 a year. Right. This client was really struggling with this, da, da, da. Short, simple, no BS, no hype, the real deal. What did you really help these people get? What did they say? The difference that it made to them. Right. So real success stories. Now people are going, yeah, I'm interested. So would you like to know how they did it? Yeah. So your service and program and the purpose and expected outcomes of that program. They did it through my marketing action group, my nine-month program that trains you in depth on how to do these things and not only learn how to do these things, apply these things in real time, get feedback until you are producing results with this program. So that it is. And it's for these types of clients. And so I go back to it's for self-employed professionals. It's for coaches. It's for trainers, it's for consultants or the combination of those. Those are my ideal kind of people. If you're in that niche, this approach will work for you, right? Now I'm going to give you more specifics about the ideal people for your program. So I talk about them a little bit and who they are and stuff like that. Enough that they know. Yeah, that's me. Super quick commercial break. Isn't this interview amazing? If you'd like to get more ideas on how to start or grow your speaking business fast, pop over to our free training at doitmarketing.com slash webinar. I'm guessing, Robert, also in the previous section with our testimonials, we're going to be hand-selecting testimonials to cover a spectrum of different types of people that we work with. So even up there, they start to identify what that sounds like my situation. That kind of sounds like me. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you work with what you have. Sure. Say, well, I don't have great testimonies yet. Well, you work with what you have. You know, some people have amazing ones. You work with what you have. Totally. So what actually is the service or program? Well, it's a nine-month coaching and training program, blah, blah, blah. So they know what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. And the primary focus of the program, I come back to my main ideas again. We focus on creating your high-end program, getting you in front of the right people, giving presentations, and closing the business. That's what we work over and over to fine-tune it and really make it work for you until you're getting results. And then the last thing, components or structure of the program. So every program is components. So I have four major components. One is we meet as a group every two weeks. For 90 minutes. We meet one-on-one twice a month for about an hour to do coaching and fine-tuning and help. Number three, we give you assignments to work on, probably the most important part of the program. We give you very specific step-by-step assignments for you to implement what you need. And fourth is you do weekly accountability reporting and you send an email or report on Slack and say, this is what I've done this week. This is what I'm working on. These are any questions. So you have accountability. Nice. So those are the four components. And then I give a little bit of detail of them. You know, this, 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 this. Not a lot of detail. You don't need a lot of detail. Just so they understand. Okay, we meet as a group on Zoom and we meet one-on-one Zoom and talk and blah, blah, blah. So right. everybody understands how it all works. So why does it take the time and the work that it does? So every program. You know, your programs are shorter, mine are longer. David makes more money than me. (laughs) My people get into it deeper, you know, whatever it is for you. So I want to justify why it takes nine months. And, um, you know, I call my programs action programs, not information programs. You apply this stuff. You go through the struggle of actually doing it. That takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. And then once you've produced results, then we up the gradient and you go even for a higher level. So by the end of the nine months, 
not only are you sort of getting it working, you're getting higher end clients and better clients and you're closing more and it's really happening for you. So it's like, okay, that makes sense that it would take that long. After all, people have been in business in this program for 10, 20 years and are still struggling with marketing. What's nine months of intense work to really get them to a new level? Right. It's worth the investment, right? And then I say, what's the big difference in my program or your program if you're working on this compared to other programs? And why is it better? Well, I think it's better because it has this component or that component or this aspect or, you know, it has my 35 years of experience of working with people. It's tested. It's blah, 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 whatever it is. More evidence for why it's valuable. Yeah. Then some kind of what I call risk reversal or guarantee. Now, I have a guarantee, and then I have a close guarantee that I did for the first time. And my guarantee is you will get results in this program that more than double your investment in the program, or I'll continue to work with you for no additional cost until you've reached that. Here's the thing. If people usually get one client that pays for the program, one client they wouldn't get otherwise, it pays for the program. Pretty simple, right? So people would say, yeah, I can do that. You know, it's worth it. If I get one or two clients, it's going to pay for itself. And then my final close is, you know, I, <laughs> I'm even hesitant even saying this here, but what the heck, here it is. I said, I'm doing something I've never done before. Mostly it's because of COVID-19. People are hesitant to invest more than ever these days because we're not certain about the future, right? Yeah. So I said, here's what I'm doing. The first month of the program is free. No investment whatsoever. You get everything. Two meetings, two meetings with me, your homework. We really make progress in the program. And then after the first month, if you decide that, yes, this is right for me, then you'll continue and pay monthly. And I have them pay monthly, not all at once. I like it for my cash flow, whatever. It's, sure. you know, whatever. It's easy for people to handle. So that's what I do. And you know what? Out of the 19 people, 16 continued. One guy dropped out right away because he was miffed about something. One person, he lost his biggest client and his wife lost his job and he just didn't have the money. So, you know, it was a real situation. And someone else, I can't remember. But 16 out of 19, not bad. And they paid me by October 1st. Yeah. So now we're rocking and rolling. We're in the program. People are committed. And it worked really well. So, you know, the thing that we have to understand about this is we've got to customize this to ourselves. You know, the thing that I say right after that is I told you the close. So if you think this program might be for you, we need to talk. You can't just sign up for it. We need to talk. I have to see if it's for you. I'm going to ask you some questions. But here's the great thing. Here's the exciting thing. I used to meet with people for an hour to an hour and a half when I did the sales letter. Now I can handle it in 30 minutes. Yeah. Because all the questions have been answered. They have no questions because I've communicated it powerfully through the presentation. That's the magic of the presentation. And they go, wow, this is great. And I ask them a few questions. Tell me a little bit about your business, et cetera, et cetera. I say, do you have any questions? Blah, blah, blah. And they say, no, it sounds great to me. (laughs) Right. And I say, okay, great. And here's what I require of you. And then I send them an agreement. And I say, send that agreement back in writing, and then I send them preparation work. And then they spend several hours in preparation work to really get them up to speed. And then the program starts a couple weeks later or a month later, depending on when we signed up for the program. So again, it will be different depending exactly on what you're offering. But this thing, now I would like to give this to everybody that's attending this for free. Wow, that would be tremendous. And the way you get it is you go to my website, actionplan.club, not .com, .club, actionplan.club forward slash free dash stuff. Really simple. Actionplan.club slash free dash. You're going to probably post this anyway, right? We're going to post it. We're going to link it. We're going to email it. People are going to see this all over the place, but they're going to run and they're going to get this presentation narrative template. And I think you also have another goodie waiting for them. That's not all. You know, the main thing that I've always offered here is my ebook called Get More Meetings, Land More Clients. 
because obviously getting meetings is a big part of this. And if you can get more meetings, then you can do these presentations, right? right? So that's my free giveaway. It's a report, but I've added on to that report this presentation narrative. So now you will get the meeting and you will close the meeting because you will run the meeting using this template and this presentation that Robert's going to help you put together. Yes. And it probably goes without saying, then you will be on my email newsletter list. And you know, I've been sending my newsletter for, I'm in my 24th year. I've been sending my newsletter once a week for 23 years. And so every Tuesday, I write an email newsletter with some tips and ideas about marketing exclusively for self-employed professionals. I keep it under 500 words. You can read it in two minutes or less. It's good, pithy, useful stuff, I promise. But of course, you can unsubscribe anytime you want. And I have to admit, I came late to the Robert Middleton fan club because I think I signed up in like 2002 or 2003. And uh, it's been just 17 years of agony. Agony. (laughs) It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Really, really genius stuff every single time. And it's funny because, you know, as someone who sends a lot of email and, you know, you had mastered this, you were one of the first folks that were doing professional services marketing online. You are just a rock star. And I use the word guru because, of course, your seminal work all those many, many years ago was the Info Guru Marketing Manual, which I still have proudly displayed on my bookshelf. There it is. Yes, indeed. Very, very nice. You also have one proudly displayed on your bookshelf. What a shock. Yes, right. <laughs> I have a really great, answer. Robert. Every once in a while, I'll read through this and go, that's pretty smart. That's good. Exactly. You know, exactly. This was written 20 years ago. And, you know, much of it is true, but I've learned a lot of things since then. And I've narrowed things down, you know. Like I said at the beginning of this, you can do a million things in marketing, but if you focus down to those four things, you know, high-end program, getting in front of people, powerful presentation, knowing how to close the business. Now, for each of those things, those are not simple. Those are simple, but not necessarily easy. It takes work. It takes know-how. But I gave you as much as I possibly could in this today. Hopefully, you'll find that useful. I'm sure you'll be able to take it away. Many of you will be able to create a powerful presentation just from that form. And that can make all the difference in the world. It really can. Absolutely right. Well, Robert, any parting words of wisdom for our consultants and experts and sales pros out there who are furiously taking notes, immediately running to download both the ebook and the narrative presentation template? Closing thoughts, final words of wisdom. Well, gee, just off the top of my head, you know, I believe in authentic marketing, a marketing that comes from your real expertise, knowledge, authentic self, being a genuine human being. You know, marketing has a bad name in many ways. Marketing is about deception. It's about manipulation. It's about conning people. It's semi-honest, all that BS. And I don't believe marketing has to be that. If you can offer the real deal, You know, I have real value. I teach real things that work for real people in real ways. If you have that, you know, that's what you have to have as the foundation of your business. Then you can do all those things. If you don't have the real deal and it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, you know, forget about it. You know, get good at what you do and be authentic. Then you can live with yourself, you know, you can make great money and live with yourself and have fun at the same time. So, Marketing doesn't have to be a con job. It can be authentic. I love it. Well, thank you, my friend. And you are one of the original authentic marketers, and I appreciate you hugely. Thank you very much, David. Thanks for the opportunity to present to the people you know. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Speaking Show. Hey, tell you what, if you like us, rate us and review us on iTunes. Subscribe, tell a friend. Go grab the notes and downloads and extras at thespeakingshow.com. See you next time. 